today we are going to talk about measuring recovery for performance. What does that mean? Uh, how do we kind of set the stage for this particular conversation? Yeah, why recovery matters. Um, so getting better in exercise, sport, athletics, we need to overload the athlete. That's how we drive new adaptation. But we also need to balance that overload with recovery, you know, so we have to have this stimulus of the workout or the training and then, of course, they need to rest so that they can rebuild to a stronger level. We need that overload to progress. And so people are trying to maximize performance by finding this maximal amount of training stress that they can withstand, because that's, of course, what drives the adaptations we want. The problem, of course, is that we can apply too much stress and then mm. that will have negative performance outcomes. We can't just only stress the athlete. And so we have three outcomes of what happens when there's too much overloading that ultimately result in chronic fatigue affecting performance. And so there's three levels of this. You can think about them as though they're on a continuum. They're known as functional overreaching, non-functional overreaching, and then overtraining syndrome, which would be at the very far end of that. Now, before getting more specifically into these three, it's important to understand that it's possible that none of these occur. <laughs> you know, just because you're exercising doesn't mean that you're overreaching or overtraining. You might not necessarily reach functional overtraining. And to be honest, I think this is true for a lot of mainstream America. I mean, mainstream America is not even reaching basic you know, levels of exercise. So mm -hmm. being sore doesn't mean that you're overreached. Being fatigued doesn't mean that you're overreached. And so I think sometimes we use that word overtraining potentially when it's not really overtraining. We're just tired. We just have some life stress affecting our training. And so I don't think most people are getting to this overreaching phase. They're just, we could say reaching, <laughs> AKA <laughs> exercising, you know, and that's where we're going to drive a lot of positive adaptations. But okay. So those are kind of the, the three areas. And I want to say that both in the literature and I think also in the mainstream, there's not always consistent use of that terminology, which makes it more confusing. But anyway, for each of these three, functional overreaching, non-functional overreaching, and overtraining syndrome, they all result in performance decline. And the difference then, if they all result in performance decline, the difference between them is how quickly the athlete rebounds or gets back to their, their level before the decline began. And so for functional overreaching, it's actually considered a good thing. Hmm. Although there's performance decline, they rebound in days to weeks to a level that is higher than where they started. And this is what most athletes are actually ch chasing. We're going to talk about this in the next episode about like peaking, and, but this is super compensation. This is pushing training to a maximal level. We taper. And then in theory, we rebound to a higher level. Now the other two non-functional overreaching and overtraining syndrome generally, but not always in addition to performance decline have psychological symptoms, maybe it's depression, anxiety, and both of them are going to take longer to recover. So non-functional overreaching tends to take several weeks, maybe months, and then overtraining tends to take many months, potentially even a year plus. And so what we want to do is avoid that non-functional overreaching and overtraining syndrome because both have this long recovery time. And, and ultimately, that's going to have a really negative impact on performance by way of the fact we can't overload the athlete because mm -hmm. they're recovering, right? They're just taking too much time away from the sport. And of course, once we get to full overtraining syndrome, the, the athlete might not even want to come back. So when we're looking at peaking in season or progressing in performance across seasons, months of recovery away from the sport is just too much. And so this sweet spot is considered to be when we functionally overreach and have enough recovery time before game time. Uh, when you say that the, the, they have psychological symptoms, I assume that's the result of this non-functional overreaching and this overtraining, right? It's that, that's not a, that's not a cause of it. That's part of the, the downsides of it? Or is there even that's a little bit unsure? Yeah, that's a little bit unsure of exactly what causes overtraining syndrome. And, and to be honest, the, the psychological could also, of course, be things not related to, tra to training, life mm, stress, yeah. uh, personal stress, right? So that's where the psychological component is, is really hard to understand what's driving what. Okay. So they could be like, they could be depressed because of their performance, but they also could be depressed because of something in life driving the negative performance. Right. Right. Um, okay. So the million dollar question then is how do we, tr how do we get ourselves closer to the functionally overreaching or functional overreach and, and but yet stay away from the non-functional overreach and obviously the overtraining syndrome. 
I'm sure you're going to give us the magical answer in the next. Yes, we know exactly when that happens. Uh, unfortunately, no. Like that, that, that is of the course million not. dollar Why wouldn't question. We? That'd that, be easier. That is that is what we want to know. That's what we're yeah. trying to unpack here for sure. You know, the problem with not overreaching is you're always left with, did I push myself enough? Did I train enough? Um, yeah, I actually really like this quote. It's from Adrian Bosman on, on training staff. And he was mm-hmm. like the most... The most honest five rep max is four reps <laughs> because you pushed yourself to hit that wall, right? And so if yeah. you don't reach that part when you hit the wall, do you actually know you put in enough time, right? And then on the flip side, the problem with too much overloading is you may end up in those non-functional overreaching, et cetera, and not recover in time. So finding out where you are, that's a hard thing. Now, in 2012, I think the online, it was that formerly maybe 2013, the European College of Sports Science and the American College of Sports Medicine put out a joint consensus statement on overtraining syndrome and the links in the show notes. And basically what they said there is there's not a clear way to, to differentiate between these three stages, except by looking at how much rest was required for the athlete to rebound. Remember, we have all three have a performance decline, and so only after the athlete gets back to their baseline performance, did it take a weekish? Did it take many weeks? Did it take many months? Then we know, okay, oh, that athlete was functionally overreached versus that athlete was non-functionally overreached. We also have to remember that overtraining syndrome is a diagnosis of, of exclusion, which means we have to make sure there isn't something else going on. We already kind of mentioned that with maybe depression that could be life related, not sport related, but it also could be something like the athletes under eating calorically, maybe they actually have a true nutrient deficiency like iron. Do they just have a virus or a sickness that's leading to this? Do they have life stress like we mentioned? So we have to consider all these other factors besides just the training to figure out why the training might be declining. And so we need to have this sustained performance decline for at least weeks or days to enter the functionally overreach category. And then where you are exactly once that happens on that spectrum, we don't know until you rest enough. Hmm. So when we're talking about looking for a real time training for a specific event coming up, this really isn't ideal right? Because (laughs) we don't know how long it's going to take for them to rebound. Ideally, there would be a way that we could say, oh, this athlete right now, they're functionally overreached. They're not yet non-functionally overreached. But we don't even have clear and consistent diagnostic criteria for when they're in their stages. So the idea that we're going to be able to predict that line accurately is probably a little shaky. Um, But yet there's been no shortage of ideas or technologies that try to do this. 